Stay and Fight by Madeline Fitch. Hello everybody, my name is Naya Tobashi and today I'll be doing a book review on a book called Stay and Fight by Madeline Fitch. Now this book was published on mid-2019 and the genre for this book is fictional literature and humor. The setting of this book is 2015 in Appalachian, Ohio. Now this book has four main characters which are Helen, Lily, Karen, and Rudy. Now Helen is a 32 year old woman with her two friends who are a lesbian couple, Lily and Karen, and they're trying to make a good living since they don't have much money and are living in a house they built on their own. Now they're making their minds together in one so they can make it through the struggle of going through winter, going through the seasons, all in a, in the house they created in Ohio in the woods. Now, Karen hates getting help from other men because they will treat her as if she's weak, but she's completely not. Now, Lily, on the other hand, is the complete opposite of Karen. She doesn't mind getting help from anybody and is the sort of girl to be very honest and hates to fight. She would rather go and come to a solution instead of arguing for hours and hours. Now, currently, Lily is pregnant and Lily is pregnant with a boy. But could a newborn really live in a poorly made house run by three females? What difficulties will be made when trying to make a living in the woods with no money on a poorly made house with a newborn baby coming on the way and having to make food from the woods? There shall be many difficulties and we shall get into that sooner or later. Helen is running short on money because she spent all her money coming down from Seattle to Ohio. When she goes to Ohio, she figures out there's an oil field up north of where she lives and she decides to work for Rudy. Rudy then takes Helen on a journey to the woods to meet Lily and Karen. Lily and Karen are a lesbian couple, but they're also partners of Rudy. Now, Lily and Karen live in a woman's land trust. Lily is pregnant and Helen finds out from Lily that her baby is due in three months. Lily and Karen are very helpful to Helen, even though Helen does not seem to ask for any help, although she's still very thankful towards them. Helen even says, I hope that Lily and Karen wouldn't leave. Now, when being asked about what, what does Helen think about Rudy by Karen, being asked this question by Karen, Helen replied, I trust him with my life every single day that I work with him. This is a huge statement. Now as Lily, Karen, and Helen are bathing in a body of water they found in a forest right next to a beehive, Lily is told why her boyfriend, Shane, left to work up north. Now, now let me talk about Shane. Shane is Helen's boyfriend. Shane used to work for Rudy before any of this even happened. And then Shane all of a sudden decided to leave Rudy. Now, Shane left Rudy because they got in a crazy fight. And then Shane left Rudy unconscious in the woods. Rudy was then discovered. This was a very lonely time for Helen. Although she made it through this time and decided to move in with Lily and Karen. Chapter 2. Lily, Karen, and Helen are all living together so they can save monies and buy accessories for the house to get through the winter. They haven't spent it nor talked about money for a while, so they ate what they, could, what they had and until one night, Helen offered some dead squirrels to Karen and Lily. Now this made Karen very angry because apparently Helen did not notice how hard they are trying to save money to make the house last through the winter. Karen even said, quote unquote, this house, it's a ring example of poor craftsmanship. Now, Karen also blamed the, crash, the craftsmanship on Helen, since she was the lead carpenter. Now, Helen and Karen were both arguing while Lily is trying to hold her baby and is trying to come to a solution. When Every time she would calm them both down, they would both shut her down and told her to stay out of it. Karen also said that this is about two things, running out of money and not having any shelter for the winter. It's like they're trying to figure out who is the fault of all the general problems like making it through the winter, having enough money for food. Karen turned back to Helen and said, I don't care if you feel good about yourself. I just want to know who's in charge. Is it me? Because I'm not full of shit and I actually know how to build things. Or is it you? Because this is your place. Helen said, 
quote unquote, it's our place, our place, our place. There doesn't need to be a leader. It's not that bad. Now, Lily is really trying to get them to settle down by suggesting ideas like get a professional carpenter. But every time Lily suggests something, they both just keep on shutting her down until they stay out of their business and let them argue about it. This was the beginning of the rivalry between Karen and Helen. Lily grows up. Now, as Pearly grows up, he decides he wants to go to school. And Karen and his mom, Lily, agrees with it. Now, as, as he's going to school, he gets bullied by the way he dresses and how he doesn't know how to use a tablet. Because keep in mind, it's 2015 and technology is a very common thing in that time. Now, that same night, the Pearly goes home to his mom, to, to his two mothers, and that same night, he gets bitten by a black snake. Now, Karen refuses to call 911, instead, cleaning him up with herbs and bandages. Now, th uh, the next day later, um, now the next day later, Pearly shuts himself in the camper and kicks everyone else out. All three women agree that Pearly has the right to, to his own space, as long as Karen can take care of him at least once a day. Lily, re uh, Lily realizes that Helen and Karen are getting along better. As Pearly goes back to school, he gains respect from his fellow students because of his scar. Since Pearly is showing off his snake bite, Pearly's teacher decides to step in and take action. She notices how poorly his snake bite has been, treat, uh, been treated, so she calls 911 and the government decides to take the child away from them. Right As of right now, Pearly, Pearly is living in Grandma Barlow's home. Grandma Barlow is the mother of Karen. Now, if Lily and Karen wants to get Pearly back living with them, they would have to buy a whole new house and a lot of new um, accessories. Anyway, all of this will round up to about $15,000 within the required 90 days. So now Helen decides to go back to work for Rudy and Karen leaves to work up north in an oil field. A couple days after Pearly is with his grandma, he decides to leave and abandon her because he is hallucinating by these pills he is taking. So he decides to take these pills and throw them away. Right after this, he decides to run away. Um, as Pearly's running away, he's running away with cuts and bruises, he's falling through everything. He's running in a, in a dark forest all by himself. So all of a sudden, Karen goes out on, on the perfect timing. Karen goes out to take a smoke break because she is very stressed because she only has a couple of months left to gain $15,000. Now, as she is going out, she looks to her side and she notices something, something of a presence. Now, when she looks after it, she notices it is Pearly. And then Pearly goes home and that is the end of the story. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next book report coming out next year. Thank you. Bye-bye.